Hi everybody! Today I am going to show you a couple different stringers that I will be using in my mermaid bead. And these are just a, a couple of the stringers. I also use other stringers that are the same as in the ocean bead. So if you need to know how to make those, you can visit my ocean bead prep videos uh, for how to do those. But I'm making a double helix and a hair stringer for the mermaid in this video. So I'm just using a clear. I'm making the double helix one first. And both of these are very similar in how they're made. So I'm using a base of clear. Um, you want to make sure it's nice and clean. And two different blues. Both are CIM. And one is Aloha Blue and the other one is Electric Avenue. Um, just in case you want those. But the Electric Avenue kind of disappeared in the finished um, helix design so it really wasn't necessary to put it in. So you want to ball up your glass and actually form a little flattened rectangle and this is very similar of how do you, how you make different kinds of uh, cane work. So it's uh, it's basically a cane work that I'm making here. A piece of cane. So I'm just getting rid of the scuzzy tip on the end of that Aloha Blue. And I am going to outline the outer edges of the rectangle with this blue. And I'm going all the way around, but it's really not necessary. You really just need to stripe both sides because you kind of lose the end. You know how you always kind of lose the very end of your stringers because they're kind of fat and usually not uh, pulled out in the same way as the rest of it. So you really don't, it's not necessary to have it on the bottom. I just went all the way around. It was easier for me to continue. And you want to keep that rectangle shape. And so now I'm going to do uh, the same kind of thing with the Electric Avenue blue. But I want a stringer because I'm going to put this in the center of the Aloha blue and just have a stripe down the center. But like I said, it disappeared. This is like a semi-transparent kind of glass, and it disappeared being so small in the final look of it. Um, so it's really not necessary to have more than one color in this unless you really want a stark difference and you have um, very bright, you know, opposing colors that'll show up in the final, in the final striping. But you can make these any color you want. I'm using ocean colors because the base bead of the mermaid is actually an ocean type bead. So I'm using blues. But um, you can do these in any color depending on you know what you're going to use it for. For a cool little uh, double helix kind of design or swirl you know, in, in your final beads. So sometimes I make these just in white. So there's just a stark white um, in the ocean bead. Um, but this time I'm using blues just to try out these new colors I have. And so I melted that little stringer in and now I'm reshaping into that rectangle shape again. And I want to make sure they're fairly melted in because I'm going to encase this whole thing with clear and I really don't want any bubbles forming. So I'm trying to get it fairly smoothed. It doesn't have to be totally melted in, but you really don't want any sharp edges between the clear and the colors that'll trap air bubbles. So it's pretty well flattened and together. And so there's that. And I am going to use clear and encase this whole thing. So you want to actually make this look like a football kind of shape at the end. So first off, I want to encase the actual uh, blue and trap it in there with the clear. And you don't need a really thick layer. So you kind of want to make a thin layer on those edges encasing the blue. And then you'll add clear to the rest of the rectangle. So I've actually covered the whole blue section with clear and I want to make sure it's totally covered. There was a little piece of scuzz there I wanted to get off at the bottom. Don't want scuzzy designs in your, in your glass. And so I'm kind of melting that down so I 
try to avoid trapping air bubbles again. And you could straighten out your paddle if it starts getting floppy. And there's different ways you can encase this. And I'm just going to show two quick ways here, but there's more than this. But the first one I'm doing, so I want to get the flat sides bulked up to make a football shape. And this first technique I'm using is just swiping on the glass. And I go back and forth a little bit to try to even it out. So I have the same amount of glass all the way across the top of that rectangle. And I'm adding a little bit to the side. And so that's one way you can encase it. And it's just whatever you feel comfortable doing. And so that side is totally encased. And now the other side, what I'm going to do, and it takes a little longer to heat it up, but I'm going to just grab a big ball of glass at the end of my clear. And once I get a nice large ball on the end, and the thickness of your rod will determine how much you can actually hold on without it being too floppy, but then you could just swipe on a large amount of glass at one time. And so that's another way to do it. And if I had a larger rod, I could have had a bigger ball and actually encased the whole area all at once. But I can only do kind of like half the side because I had a thinner rod. So it all depends. But that actually lays down more glass at a time, as you can see. But I'm going to speed this up now because I'm just adding more clear on those flat edges. You want to keep the colored edges uh, to the sides. So you only want that thin layer of encasement. And once you feel like you have enough so it looks like it's rounded out, then you can start heating it and getting ready to twist. And I had a bubble in there, which I had to pull out. And I'm not sure if it was in the rod or I made that with trying to encase. But I'm just adding a little more glass to make it evenly round around it and both sides have the same height of clear on them. I mean it doesn't have to be totally perfect, it'll still come out looking like a double helix design. But I'm adding some to the front and the back so that it's pretty much even all the way across. And I'm heating it up a little bit, seeing if it's even enough, adding a little more to the edge. And then I'm ready. It's pretty even. So now I'm ready to punty up to the other side so that I can start heating this big mass up. And you want to get a nice football shape out of this before you start pulling and try to round it out a little bit, focusing on the ends a little. And now I'm going to slow down to regular time again and I start pulling a little bit to get a twist going and then I'm going to heat it up a little bit more just so that it's really easy to pull and twist out and get a nice fairly thin stringer it's not super thin it's probably about three millimeters thick maybe and you pull out until you have a nice stringer length so I have quite a bit of double helix stringer there. And see, you could see the end there. It was kind of all globbed up at the end. So you kind of waste that part. So you really don't need to add that on the outside. And here's a little close up of the double helix. And now we're going to do the hair stringer. And it's made very similarly. And basically you can just use a regular twisty or a regular stringer if you just want solid color hair. It really doesn't matter. But this is just the way I make my mermaid stringer. And I'm using the same kind of rectangle shape. And I'm striping on some red. The rectangle shape that I'm using here is um, a CIM color called Butternut. And it's like a nice uh, yellowy orange color. And I'm striping on some dark red. I think it's just dark red ephetre in a stringer form on either side. And this time I'm not even worrying about putting it on the bottom. I'm just tapping it down a little bit so those bottoms, it doesn't ball up and make a big ball of red at the bottom. Just tapping it around the bottom a little bit. And so just like I made the double helix, I'm going to encase this. But since I want it to be 
a hair color and kind of like Ariel mermaid color hair, which is orangey red, I am going to use orange to encase it instead of clear. So I'm using uh, CIM clockwork to encase this. And you can use any any colors you want. You can have, you know, purple hair or red hair or or blue hair on your mermaid. So it's whatever you want. This is just uh, a little more detailed hair uh, stringer that I make. But like I said, you could just use regular stringers or you can use a twisty of two different colors. You could just put a couple of color, two or three colors together and twist it and use that as hair stringer. It's all up to you what you want. And so I have this sped up again so you don't have to see me encasing the whole thing. I was trying to make this one a little um, smaller in size because the hair stringer is going to be pulled out skinnier because you want thinner strips of hair than the double helix was. And so I really don't need that much glass. I don't need as much. And even so, I got a lot of stringer out of this because it's a. I pull it down to like about a one millimeter thick. It's not very thick. And I pull it out slowly. So the difference with this one was I was pulling it out as I went along and as I kind of kept it in the heat so that I could make it smaller. And I can also have a little more control over the thickness and the twist when I was pulling it out because I wanted a tighter twist. And so you'll see how I how I do that in a minute. But just encasing the whole thing up, trying to make that football shape again. And I think I have enough glass there. And it's really hard to see because it's hot. You know, the orange looks dark. You can't even see that it's actually transparent orange over the solid uh, yellowy orange and red. And so I'm basically focusing more so on the front side where I'm going to start pulling. And I have this, this is real time now, and I'm starting to pull here and I'm keeping it right above the heat so that the rest of the mass of glass stays warm. And if it gets too warm, I pull it out of the heat, like I did right there. I pulled it out of the heat because it was getting really warm. And I want to pull it slowly and control that twist. I want a really nice twist, a tight twist in there. And so I pull it out so far, and then it's getting stiff. So I'm going to break that off. And there's a nice thin, like one millimeter stringer there, maybe one and a half of hair stringer. And I'm just going to punty up to the rest of it, and I'm going to start pulling out a little bit more. And I'm right above the flame, trying to give that skinnier section just a little bit of heat so I could pull it out a little thicker, uh, thinner, because it was a little too thick. I'm just trying to give it a little bit and pushing it, you know, putting it in and out of the flame just a little bit because it's so thin there. And then I'm adding a little more heat to it to get the rest of the mass warm so I can make that section pull out really thin also. And you want to keep the flame behind what you're pulling out. As you can see, I'm, my flame is focused a lot lower on that mass of glass and not on the stringer itself that I'm pulling out. So it, as it's going further away from the flame, it's getting cooler. And so it allows me some control. It takes a little getting used to this of how to do it properly. But once you get it, you have a lot more control over how thin and how much twist you can put into your glass as you're pulling it out. Oop. And then I dropped it. It actually broke off the other <laughs> glass. And so that's okay. So I'm just going to melt it off there. And I could get, I could still get this remainder and have another nice size stringer here. So I'm just going to use the tweezers this time. Heat up a little bit, keep twisting, pulling, twisting, till I get all of it out that I can. 
And so I can make several mermaids with this if I want them all to have this orangey hair. I can make several of them. I have quite a lot of hair stringer with just that little mass of glass. So I have three stringers now. And so there are those stringers and it's hard to tell in the zoom up. It's easier in the picture at the end. But I try to zoom in here and slow down so you can kind of see the twist a little bit. But it's fairly difficult to see. But that's it for the prep stringer for the mermaid. And now we'll get on to making the mermaid bead. Thanks for watching.